teenage children. It's for anyone who wants to uh, attend. Turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 15. And while you're uh, turning there, <coughs> I'll give you some uh, background as into uh, uh, the writing uh, of Jeremiah at this particular time. Uh, Jeremiah was a, a prophet of God and also a priest, and he lived at a tragic time in the, in Israel's uh, history. Previous to uh, the his writing here, uh, Israel had been uh, racked by civil war, with the result that the, the ten uh, northern tribes uh, uh, separated from the southern tribes of uh, Judah and Benjamin and, and formed their own uh, country known as uh, Israel. And the two southern tribes, they, uh, they were called Judah. Now, uh, Israel was uh, uh, heavily into idolatry uh, at this particular time of uh, uh, 100 years previous to uh, Jeremiah. And uh, the Lord uh, used the Assyrian nation to come uh, down and, uh, and, uh, and judge those people by uh, destroying them uh, utterly. Uh, we took that up this morning in, uh, in the Sunday school uh, portion of the, the service where uh, Israel was carried away and, uh, and totally destroyed. Now, the country of Judah, though uh, also uh, idolatrous, uh, wasn't quite as bad as that of uh, Israel, and they lasted just a, a short time longer. Now, Israel, uh, Jeremiah here, he's uh, writing to uh, warn his people, whom he dearly loved, about the impending uh, judgment that was upon them if they didn't repent from their uh, sinfulness and, uh, and turn again to the Lord. So uh, that's a little bit of the background that we have uh, uh, as to this particular portion of the scripture, uh, the message that Jeremiah had it wasn't uh, very well accepted. In fact, it was rejected uh, uh, quite quite often. And uh, and Jeremiah is called a weeping prophet because of the rejection uh, that the people had for his message. He knew what was going to happen with them. You know, and right away we can start drawing parallels with uh, the Christian life and the message that we have to uh, uh, to give the world and uh, the response that uh, we usually get from it. But uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Uh, I'd like to start reading from the 15th verse of the 15th chapter, uh, right through to uh, the end of it. It says, O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and avenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, incurable which refuses to be healed? Will thou be altogether unto me like a liar and like waters that fail? Therefore thus saith the Lord, If thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return thou not unto them. And I will make thee under this people a fortified bronze wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. And before we uh, just get into uh, the word here this morning, I'd like uh, you to ask yourself some uh, uh, pertinent questions uh, concerning... Uh, this portion of scripture today why you uh, chose this particular uh, place to come and uh, and worship the Lord in uh, why you didn't choose as uh, for example uh, a Catholic or, or a Mormon church to uh, uh, to worship in you know and why have you uh, decided to uh, let yourselves uh, be known as Protestants uh, rather than some other uh, particular denomination uh, and the answer to that, if uh, if you only think about it for a minute, is uh, is this book, the book that uh, we've been uh, studying uh, quite a bit uh, with Steve in the in the past Sundays. You know, it's our, our standard, and, and what's contained in the, in its pages uh, is uh, what we uh, we thrive on. And it was also the leading of uh, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God combined. That, uh, that guided us into uh, a right uh, relationship with, uh, with God and, and steered us away from, uh, from falsehood and, and uh, false teaching. You know, but it's not enough to, uh, to uh, simply uh, say that, well, I'm not of that particular denomination, I'm a, I'm a Protestant and I stand on the Word of God. 
uh, you know, there's lots of Protestant denominations around that uh, that I wouldn't touch with a ten foot pole. You know, it seems that we're uh, living in a very strange times today, uh, probably more than uh, than any time in uh, in history. Uh, simply because we have, uh, on one hand, the Word of God being taught in uh, just about every nation in the world. Uh, there's people getting saved, and there's uh, uh, people's lives that are being transformed and brought to the Lord. But on the other hand, we have widespread confusion as to what the, the Bible teaches. You know, why? Well, the trouble isn't with the, the book. It's the same book that's been passed down to us uh, throughout the ages. Uh, and the Lord, I think, has been very diligent to see to it that uh, His Word has been uh, preserved uh, for us. The trouble is with, uh, with the Christians and with the so-called Christians who take the book and they compromise its power and authority uh, to get uh, praise from man and, and uh, hoping to get uh, praise from God as well. You know, if that's uh, entirely possible, and I'm not sure that, uh, that it is, but I say unto them, uh, woe, because what they're doing is uh, just uh, trading in uh, eternal blessings for, for that which is only uh, temporal. You know, it's something that uh, may be here today, uh, today but uh, not be here tomorrow. Uh, James, when uh, he wrote uh, uh, his epistle, uh, rebuked all those that would uh, uh, seek after worldly uh, praise or worldly pleasures, whatever it was, and he says that uh, to be enemies or to be friends with the world was to be uh, enemies with God. The social gospel that uh, that's uh, so often being taught in our uh, churches today, it's just a, a sweet-smelling poison, and uh, and we have to uh, have to stay away from it. You know, we call ourselves uh, fundamentalists, and uh, that's that's good. You know, if we hold to a literal interpretation of the Bible. But there's also a, a lot of people who call themselves uh, fundamentalists today, you know. But they're no more fundamentalists than uh, Big Abraham out there in the barn, uh, chewing on hay. <clears throat> you know, the term fundamentalist, uh, as used uh, of uh, Bible-believing Christians, uh, speaks of uh, a person who is uh, rooted solidly to the book. It describes a, a person's uh, friends and associates his lifestyle, it describes a person's habits and uh, motives, it describes uh, who a person is uh, deep down inside the, the very core of our being. It describes uh, just what we believe in, you know, and uh, I think that the term fundamentalist, or those that would uh, be fundamentalists also have to be uh, separationists, uh, if they're going to be true to, uh, to that particular term. Dr. Charles Spurgeon, a uh, uh, gifted preacher of his day, was a pioneer in teaching uh, New Testament uh, separation. And in 19, or excuse me, 1888, uh, he declared this. He says, I have preached God's truth so far as I know it, and I have not been ashamed of its peculiarities. That I might not make a farce of my testimony, I have cut myself off of those who err from the faith and even uh, from those who associate with them. Uh, Dr. Spurgeon, in obedience to God's word, uh, he preached uh, separation and uh, he also practiced it. And it wasn't a, a degree of separation for him. He didn't only go halfway and, and let it stop at that. He went uh, all the way with it. Uh, it became uh, everything for him. Now, God knows that it's not uh, easy to uh, live the separated life. In fact, uh, we seem to uh, receive a double measure of ridicule from uh, the world because of the stand that we take. Uh, you know, and, and more often than not, those that uh, are closest to us, those ones that uh, that we love and that we hold dear to us, they're going to look at our stand and they're going to uh, they're going to wonder and they're going to uh, maybe not hate us, but they're going to feel really sorry for us and they're going to uh, separate themselves uh, from us. You know, but uh, let us uh, press on and let us uh, encourage one another. Perhaps we're uh, too much like a. An old mountain man uh, named John, who lived just uh, west of here and, and worked at uh, at a lumber camp. As the story goes, the lumber camp was uh, now uh, uh, plagued by a large black bear who had uh, been uh, robbing the food supplies and and uh, causing a general commotion at night. So uh, John, being a, a hunter and uh, renowned for his uh, hunting tactics, 
uh, picked up his rifle and uh, he vowed that uh, he wouldn't return until he had uh, bagged the bear. But the next day at camp, uh, there was John and no bear. So they asked John, they said, well, what's the matter, John? Did you lose the trail? He said, no. He says, but those tracks, they were just getting a little bit too fresh. You know, and that's maybe the trouble with uh, Christians today, that we lack the courage when the, the fighting gets uh, the, the fiercest. You know, and when the, the enemy is so close to us that we can uh, really smell him, you know, we, we tend to have a tendency to tremble and, and to run. May the Lord help us to stand in, the, in these days against uh, on uh, good old Bible principles. But let's uh, take a look at the, the conversation that uh, Jeremiah had with the Lord. And I think that we can uh, gain some uh, very uh, helpful insights as to uh, the separated life. Uh, first of all, in verse 16, it says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. And here we have the fundamentalist food. Jeremiah was, uh, what he was saying here was that he partook of the Lord's food in a life-giving way, as though his uh, very life depended upon it. The food that, uh, that we eat today, it's uh, what gives us our strength to, uh, to keep on living. The food that we uh, eat today, it nourishes our bodies up and it uh, puts uh, uh, strength into our muscles and into our bones. And if we, uh, if we don't eat, the simple fact of it is that we're going to die. You know, Jeremiah, he ate God's word. He gulped it down greedily because uh, it's what gave him his strength. And uh, he really needed strength in these uh, troubled days that, uh, that he lived in. You know, many Christians uh, today and I include myself in this, uh, don't feed on God's Word uh, in a life-giving way. You know, we nibble at it here and there, and, and, and we read it occasionally, but we don't uh, eat enough of it to, uh, to sustain us you know, and to carry us through. And, and it's no wonder, oftentimes, that we're weak and, and we're carnal. It's no wonder that we haven't got uh, a proper knowledge of uh, how we should act and which way we should go, yeah, what's right and, and what's wrong. We have, uh, like when trouble comes uh, knocking at our door, we, we get defeated right off the bat, you know, even before the, we open the door. And uh, the reason for it is that we have no spiritual muscle and, and, and no endurance. And the, and the reason that uh, we are in such a, a poor state is because we're living on spiritual junk food. And by that I mean uh, we're letting our uh, ideas be uh, shaped by uh, the world's philosophy or maybe from uh, unsafe friends or uh, music even uh, or, uh, or television. You know, we're, we're swamping our minds with, with all of this uh, junk and, uh, and it's having its effect on us uh, whether we know it or whether we don't. There's a condition, a medical condition, that's known as anemia. Now, I don't know, and I don't pretend to know anything about uh, too much about medical terms, but anemia uh, simply is a state where the, a person's body hasn't got enough uh, red blood cells within it. Uh, or maybe it's uh, because uh, uh, the, there's a, the hemoglobin content uh, is low per unit of blood. Now, what that all simply means is that instead of having great big uh, red uh, healthy blood cells, the, the blood cells, they're small and they're, and they're weak. And the, condi and the, the symptoms of uh, anemia are uh, headaches and uh, weakness and uh, fatigue and uh, irrit irrit irritability. And the prescribed remedy for that uh, condition is uh, just a, a good uh, diet high on uh, blood building pro uh, blood building materials such as protein now uh, as we look around the Christian population in general and maybe even if we look a little bit closer to uh, to ourselves you know we can see a spiritual illness that's uh, pervading our churches and it closely resembles uh, anemia you could call it spiritual anemia if you, if you like and it's uh, estimated that maybe 75 percent of, of uh, Christian population suffers from uh, this particular condition. The, some of the symptoms of it are uh, an unusual uh, drowsiness, 
uh, an idleness, a lack of power, accomplishment, easy fatigability, irritability, and uh, ineffectiveness. And I'm sure if we all want to be honest, uh, completely honest with ourselves, we can uh, say that somewhere in our Christian lives we've felt like this, you know, to some degree or, or other. Uh, so what then is the, the cure for, uh, for this uh, spiritual anemia? It's not uh, hair of newt and uh, uh, dog's leg stood up in a, in a cauldron at 12 o'clock on uh, some uh, moonlit night. No, there's nothing uh, mystical about it. In fact, it's very simple and uh, it's so basic. It's uh, All it is is just a, simply a good spiritual diet on the Word. It's, it's eating the Word down. And not just uh, reading it uh, today and, and leaving your Bible closed for the rest of the week. It's uh, feeding on it continually. And when we're not feeding on it, we, we have to be digesting what we've, uh, we've read by meditating over it. And uh, we must uh, study in, in such a way as to uh, gain knowledge Often, uh, my wife and I, we've, we started reading through the Bible and we do it uh, just before we closed our eyes at night while we're laying in bed. And, uh, and then we'd shut the lights off and we'd go to sleep. Well, actually, I gained nothing other than to read a, a page in a book because that's all that uh, it meant if I didn't meditate upon it and I didn't digest it and let it become part of me. You know, There's really no uh, formula for just how much time we should spend in God's Word, but... I think that uh, maybe a good uh, starting place would be that if we uh, only spent as much time feeding our souls as we do our, our own natural uh, bodies with food, then uh, maybe somewhere we'd, we'd have a, a proper uh, uh, balance. But uh, let's go on anyway. Verse 17 says, I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand. For thou hast filled me with indignation. What the prophet was saying uh, here was that uh, when your word became the joy and the happiness of my heart, it convicted me. It convicted me uh, of uh, just the sinfulness of sin. And it filled me with uh, righteous anger against all those that uh, would oppose you and that all those that, against all those that would uh, stand against you. You know, when a person is uh, confronted with the word of God, there's always uh, going to be a response. The Lord said it in His own word. He said that His word would not return unto Him void. Either there's going to be a negative reaction or there's going to be a positive reaction. They're either going to accept what uh, the Bible says or they're, they're going to reject it. You know, it seems uh, to me that when a person gets saved, and I just I love seeing uh, Christians who uh, have only been saved for a very short time because they're just full of a uh, an unnatural uh, energy and uh, I'm sure that it's the Spirit of God just filling them and consuming them and they have a tendency to uh, the first one of the first things that happens to them is that they fall uh, head over uh, heels in love with this book I know I've seen it uh, uh, quite often and it was uh, true in my life too I just couldn't uh, seem to get enough of it and I was proclaiming the message wherever I could you know but against this the reaction there's also the negative side of it where people uh, reject the Word of God. And it seems like they're not content simply just to reject the book and reject the message of it. They hate it, and they stand against it, they fight against it, and they want to try and destroy it. And uh, we happen to be caught up in the fray of the, of the, the hatred because they not only hate the book, they also uh, begin to hate us and hate the message that we have. Now, and, it's, and it's not because of our lifestyle, uh, you know, it's because of uh, the message that we proclaim. People, they just don't want to hear that they're sinners. They don't want to hear that their lifestyle is uh, at enmity with God and it's opposed to God. You know, They figure in their own minds that they're uh, righteous and that they're just as good as anybody else. And, the, and they hate the, the message that we have uh, proclaiming that they're uh, sinners uh, condemned to hell. You know, Most people I talk to figure they're going to heaven. And that they've never opened the Bible and they've never accepted Christ as their Savior. You know, uh, when we determine to uh, follow God and to live the separated life for Him, we're going to lose a lot of friends. You know, and it's not because that we no longer want to associate with these people. We don't want. Uh, it's not as though 
we don't want them as our friends any longer, but they don't want the same relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where the, the, the line uh, is drawn. Uh, at work, I work at uh, Algoma Steel, and uh, I had a friend that uh, that started just the, the day after uh, I did. His name was uh, Colin Chalmers. And uh, we became uh, pretty good buddies, probably best of friends. And uh, he was also the best man at my wedding. He lived at my house for about five or six months when he needed a place to live. And uh, it seemed like we always uh, were able to uh, to share just about everything. Uh, I loved everything that he, he did, and uh, uh, most things anyway. And uh, we were able to talk, you know, for hours and hours upon uh, about anything. It was just a it was just a really good friendship, something that uh, that uh, maybe you would put up on a pinnacle and say that's the, an ideal friendship. But then Colin he went off to England, and uh, it was shortly after that uh, I was uh, given a New Testament Bible, and I ended up getting saved over it. And uh, the word became the happiness and the joy of my heart too, and I couldn't wait to relate this to Colin. So uh, he called me up one day from England, and uh, and I told him what had happened. And he said that uh, he would talk to me more about it when he came back. And he did about a year later. And uh, I'd prayed about it, and I'd hoped that Colin too would uh, receive the word as I had received it, you know, with joy and happiness. But as we sat there and he listened for some time, he says, you know, he said, I'd rather stand on my head in a manure pile than live the kind of life that you're living. You know, that uh, that hurt, especially when it came from uh, for someone that I was uh, very dear to. But uh, I encouraged myself in the Lord, and I was able to uh, stand upon uh, His promises. Of uh, I just like to read one of those promises for you. It says, "Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake." Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did they to their fathers, uh, did their fathers unto the prophets. You know, rejection is always, never easy to take, and I'm not uh, trying to uh, minimize it. And I'm also not uh, looking for sympathy to hear today, because I know that each and every one of you, uh, because of your uh, stand, because of the, because you're born again Christians. You've suffered in the same way as well, you know, brothers and sisters. We share so much in common. You know, we have the same Lord, the same faith, the same Spirit. We share the same joys, but we're also going to uh, share the same uh, heartaches and troubles. And, and I'm sure that each and every one of you uh, has suffered a rejection because of uh, the Bible in your own lives. But uh, take heart and don't let someone's uh, blindness uh, depress you. It's just it's so easy to start feeling uh, sorry for ourselves, you know. And when when that happens, then uh, we can expect uh, trouble. It's just uh, so easy to uh, to start feeling sorry for ourselves. And uh, this is what happened to Jeremiah. And uh, we can just uh, see the change in his attitude in the 18th verse here, as to uh, the attitude that he had uh, before the Lord. He says, Why is my pain perpetual, and my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed? Wilt thou be altogether unto me like a liar, and like waters that fail? You know, when the, what Jeremiah was saying here was, Lord, he says, I'm in pain. He says, I'm lonely. He says, the, they're rejecting my message. And uh, he says, Lord, where are you? He says, uh, I came to you to, and uh, and your promises. Where are your promises now of uh, of comfort for me? He says, Lord. He says, I needed a, a drink, and I came to the brook, and I found you to be as though a brook that uh, that had no water in it. Now this wasn't the way that uh, Jeremiah thought of the Lord. It was because of his uh, self pity and uh, his feeling sorry for himself that brought him down to this uh, this low state. You know, when a Christian starts feeling sorry for himself. Uh, for ourselves, uh, we have a tendency to uh, become a compromiser. Maybe it's because we're tired of standing alone. Uh, 
he, maybe uh, we wonder if the stand that we're taking is biblically right or not. Or maybe we have a tendency to uh, question whether the stand that we are taking is too extreme. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, in life we're going to have to compromise. And I'm not saying that life is without compromise. You know, maybe uh, at supper time there, when there's one piece of uh, cake left on the plate and you happen to reach for it, and just as you grab hold of it, somebody else had the same idea and they latch onto it too. You know, you can fight over it and maybe end up with a handful of crumbs. But the thing to do is to compromise and to cut the piece of cake in half and, and both you'll be uh, happy. Uh, I feel that the word compromise, and, and it is to me, it's a, it's a dirty word. And I feel very strongly about it because I've walked the road of compromise for so long. Uh, I know it's dangerous and I know the trouble that it can uh, cause the fellowship uh, with the Lord. I know that the, the trouble that uh, a life of compromise can bring. I, like I told you earlier, I worked at Algoma Steel and, and at work uh, there's only one other brother that's uh, there with me, Gary Matilla, and uh, we get picked on quite a bit. And uh, I had witnessed, I think, just about everybody in my department. There was 87 men, and I have yet to uh, get a, a really good positive uh, uh, feedback from, uh, from anyone. But when they were talking to me, uh, and uh, the rumors started going around about me, that I felt that I was uh, better than anyone else. And uh, it was the common practice of, of those... Uh, uh, guys in the, our gang that when they talked to me they would shout up in the air like this like earth calling John earth calling John like I was somewhere way up there that I couldn't even be touched with them and uh, and uh, I felt that I had nothing in common with these people and uh, so I started to uh, and, and very seriously and because of the Lord I felt well if maybe if I brought myself down to uh, uh, their level just a little bit and get on the same uh, wavelength as they are, that I'd be able to uh, to share uh, Jesus Christ with them. I was sick and tired of being called a holier than thou, and I set out to prove that I wasn't so holy, that I was just like them, had everything in common with them, except that I was saved, and, uh, and I hoped that they would receive the message. You know, it began uh, with uh, very little things at first, uh, the compromising, you know, uh, I started overlooking their uh, foul uh, language and I uh, started overlooking their uh, their uh, bad uh, manners and cr uh, progressively it got uh, where I was getting more involved uh, into uh, uh, their routine. Uh, it got to the point where I didn't speak up uh, against anything any longer. When they put down a Christian or they put down the Word of God, rather than... Uh, than stand up right away and charge at them and, and tell them just uh, the way that it was I kept my peace I become a I became a hog-tied and a tongue-tied uh, Christian and somewhere down the line it was just like uh, getting hit in the forehead with a, a sledgehammer I, I asked myself how on earth did I ever get into such a mess because I, I found that I was having a broken fellowship with the Lord more often that I, I never had the, the power of the Lord working in my life. I, I just saw it, uh, me standing uh, on the spot as a Christian without, uh, without going anywhere. And uh, the trouble was uh, because of compromise. I chose to compromise in uh, such a little area and that uh, only opened up the door for uh, the whole flood of uh, compromise to, uh, to come in. There's an illustration uh, of uh, what I'd just been speaking of, and it's uh, about a laboratory experiment that was conducted. It's about a frog, and he was placed into uh, a small uh, beaker of, uh, of cool water. The water was being heated at uh, 0 0.017, or 17 thousandths of a degree uh, Fahrenheit. Now, that's not very much. Uh, that's just a, a trickle of, uh, of heat. But nevertheless, the frog was uh, found dead after uh, two and a half hours. Now, the explanation given was that at any time, uh, the water showed such little contrast as to that of just a moment before that the frog uh, was never attracted to uh, the fact that the temperature was rising. He boiled to death, and he didn't even notice it. You know, we can learn a lot from uh, little things. We can learn a lot from uh, the frog's experience. You know, uh, we have to uh, 
take a good look at ourselves, take a good look at our uh, surroundings. We have to uh, always continually review our Christian uh, walk and our talk and our testimony. It's just too easy to go astray. In verse 19, we read, Therefore thus saith the Lord, If thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if, take, and if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return now thou not unto them. What the Lord was saying here is, uh, Jeremiah, uh, return from yourself pitying. Uh, quit feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, the Lord was uh, telling Jeremiah, uh, I haven't turned my back on you, Jeremiah, but it's you that's turned your back on me. You know, I haven't forsaken you. I'm not a liar. I'm not as a, a, a dried up brook. Uh, you have forsaken me and turned your back on me. Uh, the Lord was telling Jeremiah here, he says, keep standing. He says, I know that it's lonely where you are. I know that the going is tough. He said, but if you want to be my mouthpiece, he says, then you have to, uh, to stand where I want you to stand. Never mind the others. Never mind the way of the world that it's, uh, where it's going. Never mind that all your friends are over here and, and that you happen to be alone. Jeremiah, he, uh, because of his, uh, his position, uh, started compromising uh, the word and, and began having a low esteem of the Lord. And it was simply because he was lonely and, and uh, because he was hurt. But the Lord uh, told him to repent of his uh, selfishness and then uh, the Lord would restore him back to that position where uh, he could be used. Uh, you know, he had to uh, separate all the vile things of, uh, of life that were creeping into his life little by little and separate himself unto a, a life of righteousness. You know, it's true that the Lord can, uh, can use each and every one of you if you have a physical uh, handicap or if you have a mental handicap or if you're poor or whatever uh, negative uh, we uh, choose to, uh, to place on, uh, on uh, ourselves. You know, but it's also true that the Lord cannot use us if we're unwilling to uh, go to that place where He wants us to be or to be what He wants us to be or to do what uh, He wants us to do. If you want to speak for God, then you're going to have to be a separationist. You know, more often than not, we're going to be uh, ridiculed and we're going to be uh, criticized. But take heart, as the Lord tells us, uh, in the last portion of this, he says, "And I will make unto, uh, I will make thee unto this people a fortified bronze wall, and they shall uh, fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible." Well, the Lord, He never promised us a life that was uh, free from struggles. In fact, he promised us uh, just the opposite. But he said that uh, when the enemy comes against us, they would not uh, prevail against us. You know, our, our fight should be uh, fought with uh, absolute confidence because it's the Lord that goes before us to uh, fight our battles for us. Now, I know we're out of time, but uh, very quickly, I'd like you to uh, turn with me in your Bibles to... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 for a little bit of what the New Testament teaches on the, the fact of separation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'd like to read from uh, verse 14 down through verse 17. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And... Uh, what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel or an unbeliever? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God hath said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Here we have uh, five things uh, contrasted. On one hand, we have uh, righteousness. Verse 14, uh, light, Christ, the believer, and the temple of God. 
And on the other hand, we have unrighteousness, darkness, uh, the devil, uh, and unbeliever. And uh, these are opposed to one another. Uh, now, we really haven't got time to get into all of this, but here we have a foundation anyway of the separated life where we can begin to build our life. Righteousness, light, Christ, and uh, the believer. You know, upon uh, this simple uh, foundation, maybe we can uh, build our separated life as, uh, as Christ uh, wants us to. What alternative uh, does uh, uh, God give us concerning the separated life? And uh, I don't believe that he gives us any alternative. Verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Let that uh, be the last word that's spoken here today, the word of the Lord, as far as uh, our separation goes. You know, we have a life to live, and it's not an easy one that uh, we've been called to. The Lord knows that. But it's a life that uh, the Lord expects of each and every one of us. It's not an easy message to deliver today because I know in my own life that uh, I'm not uh, totally living the kind of life that, uh, that the Lord expects of me as far as my separation goes. But at the same time, though it's difficult to lead, uh, lead this type of life, when I've uh, pursued this particular type of life, I found uh, that the Lord has blessed me and rewarded me. And, uh, and it's only when... Uh, giving your all to the Lord that uh, you can uh, have that peace that passes all understanding have that uh, joy of heart and, and of service so often we, we get uh, our lives just turned around and going in the opposite direction and we wonder uh, why the Lord has forsaken us you know, as Jeremiah had but it's not because the Lord has forsaken us but because we have, uh, have failed to do what the Lord has wanted us to do and I just encourage you all here as brothers and sisters in the Lord this morning that uh, that this type of life is uh, is the life that of Christ likeness the, the life that uh, the Lord wants us to lead and I think it's important that uh, as we see one another in our daily lives and from uh, day to day and from week to week to stir one another up to uh, and to help one another because when we find ourselves alone as Jeremiah did we seem like there's such a wave against us. You know, even from the Christian circles, uh, there's so many unchristians that are, or so many Christians that are uncommitted to this type of life. And it's difficult to stand alone, and it's a lonely place. And uh, let's help one another uh, as this uh, day goes forth, and uh, from uh, as the week passes on before us, and and make it a, a life's ministry to stir up the brotherhood uh, to uh, to live the separated life. Let us pray. Our dear Lord, we're just grateful for your word here today. and Father, we're grateful for one another. And dear Lord, we just pray that you would put inside uh, each and every one uh, a heart's burden to uh, put your word first and foremost in our lives and to come out from the world and be separate and to stand as uh, torches and a light unto the world of darkness. There are so many, Father, that are perishing. And if we never show forth your word if we never uh, stand as a light proclaiming the message of Christ and his salvation no one's going to get saved it's only as we are separate from the world and if, and uh, that we can share with the world what uh, you have to offer it's only as we separate ourselves that we can receive the power to press on in uh, these troubled times and to be filled with the Holy Spirit to uh, prepare us for the work that uh, is before us and Father there's uh, much work to be done and the labors are few. Father, encourage our hearts to stir one another up uh, that all of us might together, might go as Christian soldiers marching on proclaiming the message of uh, your salvation. In Jesus' precious name we do thank you and praise you this morning. Amen. <laughs>